What's up, creatures? This is Tom from Creatures Book Reviews. And I wanted to talk a little bit about something that's near and dear to my heart. A little bit of story behind it, and then I'll get into the book. And today we're going to talk about Aliens Phalanx by Scott Sigler in just a second. A long time ago, way back in 1979, I was a little guy and my cousin Chuck was considerably older than me. And I remember for some reason we were staying a week at my grandmother's and Chuck left to go somewhere, I think maybe with his dad or some older friends. Uh, and Keith and I stayed at home and we were much younger and we were just goofing around playing with matchbox cars or Star Wars figures or something like that. And he came back and I remember he had a headache because he said there was flashing lights in the movie that he had seen. And the movie he had went to see was Ridley Scott's Alien. He had went to see it in the theater. And of course, being a science fiction buff that I am and uh, being a curious young man, I had all these questions about the movie. And he was a little reluctant to tell me, but he did share some information with me about it and some things that happened. And um, I became obsessed and terrified of the xenomorph that was in this movie. And I began to see it on magazine covers. I began to see it in toy stories, uh, toy stores where I would walk by and see the action figure. And I remember it more than one time creeping me out to the point that I was scared to death of the thing. Uh, a friend of mine had a graphic novel of the movie. And I remember looking at it and I remember reading it and for the first time seeing actual gore in a comic book format. So it wasn't years later until I actually saw it, but I had always had a soft spot for the Xenomorph stories because it truly terrified me. And if you ask me, I'll be honest with you, I think that Alien is one of the most terrifying, if not the most terrifying film ever made. Everyone seems to gravitate towards saying The Exorcist is their favorite film that scares them. Well, not me. I'm not nearly as afraid of The Exorcist as I was Alien uh, all the way back in 1979. And it still holds up today. It still makes my skin crawl. But that leads me to where I am today. I've read comic books from Dark Horse, and I've read several novels set in the Alien universe. But then I stumbled upon a novel called Aliens Phalanx by Scott Sigler. Now, I had read Scott Sigler before, and I really enjoyed some of his stuff. Uh, he's incredibly violent. Um, his stories are really, really uh, gritty and tough, and uh, sometimes it uh, makes you want to just go, oh, man, did he really go there? He did. But when I saw that he was going to write an Aliens book, uh, and I saw that it was out on the shelf, and I picked it up, and I'm like, wait a minute. This is an Aliens novel set in basically the Copper Age. Uh, it's m the Middle Ages. How did he pull this off, and how is this story going to go forward? Well, I read it. It's a nice, big, beefy book. It's about five, 600 pages. And I, I got through it and certainly enjoyed it. I couldn't believe what I was reading. Now, some people have complained a little bit that it has some young adult elements to it. And I can see that because some of the characters are indeed younger. But believe me, this is a true, honest to gosh, science fiction, horror, just super adventure. Somehow he has managed to marry horror, science fiction, and fantasy all into this concoction that just comes out in absolute brilliance. Uh, the book opens with just a tremendously tense scene, and it maintains this tension. Uh, there are, of course, a, a few downtimes, but the good thing about that is, is that time is used to wisely develop the characters. These characters are people that I came to really feel like I knew. I wanted to know more about them, and I really cared about what happened to them. There are many in the book. Some are more developed than others, of course, just like in any book. But our main characters, the main cast... It was a fantastic read. I was absolutely just sucked into the story. I didn't want to 
put it down. I didn't want to step away from it at all. And most of the time, movie tie-in novels aren't this good. This was certainly a cut above. It was incredible. So far, I have to honestly say, and I've read quite a bit this year already, but it's the best book I've read this year, and I can't believe I'm saying that. I really can't believe I'm saying it. It is absolutely my top pick right now. Uh, it ended up with five stars for me, a 10 out of 10. Uh, it just is, it's like a 99% if I'm going to give it a teacher grade. I absolutely loved it. There's only one scene in it that made me kind of go, I don't know if that would work out like that or not. But honestly, it's not that significant. It's very nitpicky if I want to get into it. And I don't want to tell you what it is because I don't want to spoil anything for you. But suffice it to say, we have a cast of characters. I'm not even going to give you their names because I want you to explore this for yourself. Something I'm trying to be very careful about is on just general review videos. I don't want to deep dive into anything and give anything away. But there's a group of people, um, the, the alien xenomorphs in this book, uh, they're known basically as demons, black demons. And the people don't think of them as aliens from outer space. This takes place on a completely different planet. And you don't know why it's happening until way, 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 way later in the book. But uh, it's very interesting the way it comes out. And they have a group. Uh, they have different locations. And they've all basically uh, cloistered themselves away in these mountain strongholds. And most of humanity's been wiped out. It's a post-apocalyptic type landscape with these beasts roaming about. Uh, when Scott Sigler was interviewed about this, he said, you know, you can't really nuke them from orbit when you don't have a nuke. And that's the situation these folks find themselves in. They have armor, bow and arrows, spears, something they call a demon fork. Very few people have even successfully killed one of the xenomorphs. And if to do so is to be an incredible badge of honor. It's an incredible society based on very harshly structured situations. And each one of these mountain strongholds have different sets of laws. They have groups of people called runners. Runners go from one stronghold to the other to bring things back and forth like medicines or incredibly essential items. Uh, if people get sick or if people have to have certain things and each stronghold seems to produce their own type of product. Well, the thing about it is, is the runners are the young because they're the most fit and they have to go out. Uh, the girls have to make 10 runs and the boys have to make five. Now that sounds pretty bad, but here's their explanation for that. And each of the strongholds have different, a uh, different set of rules in this particular stronghold. The men have to make five successful runs, and then they are eligible to join basically the military. The girls have to make 10 runs, and then they can stop running and join uh, with the, the other professions that are available. Everything from weaving to ironsmithing to whatever it might be uh, inside these strongholds. Uh, the girls have to do that because they are not allowed to join the military in this particular stronghold the one that we're basically dealing with most of the time. And that's kind of an interesting um, setup, the way they have that set up. Now, all the strongholds are not like this. Some of them are different. They have different uh, ways of thinking. Women can't join the military in our primary uh, stronghold that we're reading about. And they wear these suits called Heidi suits. And they basically put uh, leaves. It's like a, like a type of leaf that's all over the suit and branches and they're trained to literally take their own lives rather than being taken away by one of the black demons or killed because they think that there is a demon queen that lives in Black Smoke Mountain and that she turns you into one of the black demons if they take you off. And it's better to die by cutting your own throat than to be taken by the demons. And they always hope and train that they have the courage to do this if they find themselves in that situation. Silence is one of their greatest weapons, basically their greatest friend to be completely silent. So they travel in groups of three on the surface in the hopes that at least one of them gets back. Many times these runners disappear and are never seen again. Sometimes maybe one of them gets back or they suffer terrible injuries. Uh, they will literally 
stand completely still if a demon comes near them in the hopes that it will pass them on by. And there's some incredibly tense scenes. Imagine, here you are. You don't have a machine gun. You don't have grenade launchers. You basically are just using your wits, your nerve, and trying to stay still and quiet. And the um, xenomorphs, the black demons, they mostly come at night, mostly, as Newt says, and on the surface of the planet. And so they do try to move about most of the time during the day. But the story opens up with one of these journeys, and there's reasons that seems to be strange that the, they're seeing more of these demons out and about during the daytime, and they're wondering why. And I hope that whets your appetite just a little bit for the absolute delight that this book is. If you enjoy science fiction, fantastic. If you enjoy fantasy, fantastic. If you enjoy high adventure, uh, absolute tense thrillers, this is a book for you. Now, there is one thing that I would probably recommend. If you have not seen the original Alien or and Aliens, I would recommend seeing at least those first two films before you read this book for the simple fact that it will give it context. You will understand more of the things uh, if you do take the time to see those two films. Now, I, in the circles that I travel, most everyone has seen it. Uh, Aliens is some of the most quotable lines that's in film history. And uh, a lot, most of my friends have quoted them back and forth for years, being stupid or silly in a situation like, game over, man, game over. You know, I'm sure you probably have experienced some of that with your friends. Uh, if you are a movie buff or a science fiction buff. But the point I'm trying to get at is if you have that context, you will truly enjoy the book that much more. Mr. Sigler has done a tremendous job. Do you know, they say that he sent, I think, five or six different ideas to, um, I think, 20th Century Fox, the owner of the Alien franchise, and that they chose this one. And he has always loved this property and wanted to write in it. It is just a match made in heaven. And my question is, and I put this question to him on uh, Goodreads. He's not responded yet. He sometimes responds to questions. He's got a little section there. I hope he does respond. Is, will we ever get to see any of your other ideas? I sure hope so. Because he knocked it out of the park with this one. Pick it up. If you're looking for an absolute thrill ride... It's an easy read. It's a fun read. Uh, it is just a wonderful, exciting, superbly crafted story where you will really like the characters. Now, if you're expecting a more traditional colonial marines in outer space and hard science fiction type setting, you're not going to get it. You're going to basically get fantasy with xenomorphs. And it is just amazing. I cannot believe he pulled it off to this level. Well, I hope you check the book out. Let me know if you've read it. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, as always, we certainly appreciate you watching. If you like what we're doing here, please give us a thumbs up and like our video and please subscribe because I'd just like to, to build a community uh, so that we can talk about these things together. I just enjoy sharing. I also have another channel. It's a comic book channel and a movie channel that is coming up uh, soon. I'm going to be putting some content on those, and you'll find links for those down below uh, for those different channels. And I uh, also have a devotional channel if you're interested in that. So you'll see all the links for my different channels. I enjoy doing these videos, and I certainly enjoy spending time with people of like mind. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching. As always, be kind to each other. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.